Grievers, welcome to Summer Equip. My name is Mr. Jiggs and I am your grade five, six pastor here at Centro Seed Church. Equip is a place where we learn more about God and we help you apply it in your daily walk with Jesus. Last week, we've learned that temptation loses its power when the love of Jesus Christ satisfies our desires. God's grace and love covers a multitude of sins. Jesus Christ offers eternal life and abundant life for all who turn to Him, and this message of the gospel is in itself the best defense against the power of temptation. If that's the case then, what happens when we get tempted? What does repentance mean? Well, let's find out as we continue our series. Stay fresh, enjoy, and see you afterward. Check my schedule. Yes, I'm available. Skill. It may just so happen that there will be opportunities for you to do things. Now, there might be lots of different things that you could do, and people might want to ask you to do something at the exact same time. Let's remedy that, shall we? This is called a desk calendar. What you do with a calendar is you write stuff on it like stuff that you're doing. So tomorrow at 2 p.m. I'm going to clip my toenails. My best friend Sam in Hendersonville wanted to do a Skype call and talk about Boy Scouts. So I said, sure Sam, let me check my calendar. Oh, Sammy. I'm supposed to clip my toenails at two o'clock, but let me see if I can rearrange something, hang on. All right, so I moved my toenail clip into tomorrow, the day after, the day after tomorrow. I'm gonna clip my toenails then. So Sammy, we're on. Now it's important to keep a schedule because it's a good way to keep track of things. And you can't always remember, you know, like everything up in here. So you can also have your calendar on your phone. If you keep it on your phone, then it's always in your pocket. And you can be like, oh, well, let me check. Let me see if I'm available to go apple picking with you. Yep, looks like I have an opening. Or you can have a big board like this, and you can write your stuff on the board. But then you know, at a glance, whether or not you're available to do something. Or other people will come in and they could be like, oh, I wonder if he's available. And then you look up on the board and they say, yep, he can do it. You can do daily. You can do hourly. You can do weekly. And you can do annual, that's once a year. But you wanna make sure that you do it because otherwise, if you're doing like the same thing at the same time with different people on in different states, then that might be kind of difficult to pull off. And if you ever learn to duplicate yourself, then make sure and let me know because that would be interesting to watch. We learned something new today. We learned something new. We learned something new today. We learned how to schedule. Mercy reigns and never 
there's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. And all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the
beyond our galaxy. You are holy. You are holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy. You are holy. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. If you ever messed up big. If you've ever felt ashamed. If you ever saw something you weren't supposed to. Or did something you weren't supposed to do. Then this is the episode for you. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Riley. Riley, are you familiar with the tradition we have here on the loop show that involves sugar coating? Yeah, I've heard about it, but we should remind everybody else what it is. Well, every once in a while, we like to talk about things that should not be sugar-coated. Okay, I like that. So what do you mean exactly by sugar-coating? See, sugar-coating is a figure of speech that means to take an idea and to cover it in false sweetness to make it seem more appealing. Ah, so like hiding the real deal. Exactly, and our good friends are going to help us with a topic that requires less sugar-coating. And what do we do? We eat something that should not be sugar-coated. Oh, well, yeah, this, really. Oh, ravioli and ice cream. Yeah, gonna be gross. And every single time that you see this symbol, you are gonna shout out, don't sugar-coat it. Let's practice. Don't sugar-coat it. All right, let's do it a little bit louder, ready? Wait for it. Don't sugar-coat it. Okay, I don't mind saying that but I do mind eating this. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Things are much better when you don't sugarcoat it. Sin grows best in the dark. It wants you to hide. And so friends, we're not gonna sugarcoat it. You messed up. You did something you weren't supposed to do. You saw something that you weren't supposed to see. Or maybe it was that you went somewhere that you weren't supposed to go. When you do things that you know that you're not supposed to do, sin, when we mess up, a lot of times that guilt, that shame, or even that embarrassment starts to come. And what I want you to know, though, is that you're not alone when you feel those feelings. We are not alone when we feel those feelings, right? David, famous David from the Bible, the one who dropped Goliath, that David, he messed up several times. And he didn't just mess up and then go on. He messed up and tried to hide it. We know that when we try to hide our sin, it only makes it worse. And so friends, what I want us to feel is I want us to be able to experience freedom from that guilt and from that shame and from that embarrassment. And the way that we get to do that is when we open up and talk about it. And so here's what I want for all of us. Remember that sin grows best in the dark. And so we're not gonna sugarcoat this, right? But now is the time for you to open up and talk about it so you can have a fresh start. A fresh start plan. Step one, confess. When you confess your sins, you let go of the burden of shame and let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. It's true freedom. Tell God what happened. Tell friends and trusted leaders. Stop carrying it around. Get it off your chest. Sugar coated! Hello? <laughs> hey, Mom. Hey, uh, do you got a minute? Uh, yeah, what's going on? I wanted to kind of get something off my chest. Okay, what is it? I would roll the vacuum across the carpet, <laughs> but not turn it on. And then I told you that I did, so I kind of lied to you. So we climbed over a fence uh, that specifically said 
no trespassing. Uh, okay. We saw this car pull up that we didn't know, and okay. it wound up being the manager. <laughs> we kind of just lied during that moment about what we were doing. Oh, and, oh, and you've been dealing with it for this long? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was around 4th of July, and um, we had some leftover fireworks, and we blew up a porta potty, and I never told you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not proud about it, but um, I am sorry I never told you that. Well, that's, um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did. So when I was younger, I uh -huh. once took about $3 from your wallet without asking you or telling you. And I'm really sorry about it. Oh my goodness, Jade. You must have had this out of your head and this guilt feeling for ages. How are you feeling? You know, taking money from someone and not asking them, it's not the right thing to do. And I'm just grateful that I could tell you and be honest with you. Thank you very much for being honest with me. I forgive you, babes. Thanks, Dad. I, I love you. you so much. I appreciate you calling and telling me. Yeah. And telling the truth. We've all made mistakes, but I'm grateful that you decided to kind of clean your slate, so to speak. So, you know, you're you're loved, and you're always loved. And um, let's um, let's sit down tonight and talk a little bit more about your adventures. So, all right. Cool. Thanks for your grace. Thanks for your grace, Mom. I think I was probably fifth grade. Uh -huh. I really, really wanted some Converse, yeah. and um, I was at my friend's house, and I ended up taking her pair of Converse that she had. Oh, Michelle. And Tell me more. I actually never told her that, that I took them, but that's just something that like I've been caring for a long time and I just thought it was time to to kind of come clean and to tell you about it. Well, I'm so glad that you did. How are you feeling about it now? Um, I'm feeling bad. I know that that probably has you feeling very embarrassed and maybe even a little bit sad. It would be a great thing to do to stop and pray and ask God for forgiveness. And the best thing of all is now that you've had a chance to talk about it, you don't ever have to keep that secret inside you anymore. Know that you have forgiveness from me and from your mom and ask for that same forgiveness from God and to just let him cleanse over all of that and healing to those hurt spots. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, Thanks too. Thanks for sharing with me. Was that the uh, response that you were expecting? A little bit, but it wasn't the reaction I was expecting from myself. So it just shows how much something can really latch on to you for a long time and even though I knew, I knew he would forgive me, it's so good to hear him say it. Step two, turn around and come home. Jesus talked about how to renew your heart through repentance. The Aramaic word he used to describe repentance was shuv. Translation, turn around and come home. This is not a dead end. This is another chance. Snap out of shame. It's a trap. When Jesus was alive, some people accused him of eating too many meals with too many sinners. They didn't like who he invited to dinner. In response, Jesus told them a story. He said, once there was a man who had two sons. The first son was upstanding and loved to follow the rules. But the second son was bold and thought he could do better on his own. So the young son said, yo dad, I wanna leave and in order to do that, I'm gonna need my inheritance early. So pay up pops. Just like God lets people go their own way, the father 
didn't put up a fight. He gave his young son a third of what he had and watched as he took the loot without looking back. The son traveled to a far country and scattered his money around town like it was his job. He lived a prodigal lifestyle, which is another way to say he was reckless with what he was given. Soon, his money ran out and famine hit the land. He got the only job he could find, feeding dirty pigs. He was stinky, he was hungry, and he was homesick. He remembered that even the servants at home had bread to eat. Bread is much better than pig slop. He thought, I'll admit that I sinned and I'll beg my father to take me back. Maybe he'll have mercy and let me be a servant. So he arrived at home, empty pockets and smelling like a pig. He was afraid no one would welcome him back. But the second he hit the driveway, his father burst through the door. He ran to meet his son with a big smile on his face. The son confessed that he had messed up big time. And his father said, put the best robe on his shoulders, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And let's have a feast with the best food. You are still my son. You are lost but now you're found. His father wasn't waiting to shame him. He was ready to celebrate. Meanwhile, the upstanding older brother, working hard in the field, heard the music from the party and was confused. Who could be partying when there was work to be done? When he saw the party was for his brother, he was furious. He had worked hard. He had never dishonored his father. He said, but, but, but he wasted everything. What about me? I never get a party like this. It's not fair. And his father said, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. Let's be glad that everyone is home under one roof. Your brother was lost and now he's found. Join us in the celebration. With this story, Jesus showed his critics that in the kingdom of God, everyone gets compassion. The younger son doesn't lose it by messing up, and the older brother doesn't earn it by staying faithful. God is our good father who invites everyone to his forgiveness and his welcome home party. Don't sugar coat it! Hey, Loop. So I'm in my truck. I was on my way home, and I was dancing, I was singing, just having a great time until I recognized that I am completely lost. Like I hit a dead end, I did not know where I was at, and I had to pull over in this random parking lot to try to find my way back home. Luckily, I have my GPS, and that's the tool I use to get me back on the right road that's gonna take me home. And what's so cool is that repentance is like our spiritual GPS. It's the tool that we use to turn away from the mistakes that we've made and to turn towards God. You see, God is calling us to come home. And when we repent, we get back on the right road and we get to make it home. It's just like what we heard in the story of the prodigal son. What we learn is that God's message is not if you mess up, you're out. And we learn through the older brother that his message is not if you get it right, you're in. What we know is that we serve a good God who loves us so much. And every single person gets his mercy and his forgiveness. We all get another chance. So don't get stuck in a dead end. Repent, turn around, and come home. Step three, refresh your mission. If you keep losing on the same path, get a new path. Don't relax into a cheap grace that says, I can keep doing whatever because I keep getting forgiveness. That's false freedom. Refresh your mission with new habits and accountability. Big stuff, tiny butt. We're gonna talk about what is accountability. It's holding responsibility for something or someone. We're all accountable to something like our parents, our teachers, even pets. So think about the responsibilities that you have, like doing your chores, your homework, feeding your dog and cat, 
providing or asking for accountability is a great spiritual tool. So let's talk about that. Let's find an accountable friend. How do you do that? And who is that? Someone who helps you stay on target when you can't do it alone. Someone who helps you dig past the surface level. That's a friend who helps you stay connected to Christ. And because we're being open and real, boys stick with boys, girls stick with girls. All right, here's two tips for being accountable. Be honest. Find a friend who knows who you really are. Someone who doesn't let you hide. They ask things like, uh, hey, how's it going with the such and such? They're not nosy, they're just being honest. And be humble. Find a friend who knows we're all accountable to God. It's someone who wants the best for you. So how do you do that? You listen and you stay focused. You're humble, not a know-it-all. So an accountable friend, someone who prays for you, encourages you, and tells you the hard truth when you need to hear it. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. A fresh start plan. Confess. Turn around and come home. Refresh your mission. Don't sugar coat it! That's right, we're not gonna sugar coat it, right? It's time for us to refresh our heart. And the way that we can do that is by confession and repentance. And when we say confession, we don't just mean apologizing because God isn't mad at you. The mistakes that you made, He's not just up there saying, you shouldn't have done that, right? God loves you. And even though we make mistakes, regardless of the mistakes that we make, He will never stop loving us. Repentance just allows us to open up, share about the mistakes that we made, and grow from them, get better. It refreshes our dignity and our mission. And so friends, it's time to open up and share about our mistakes so that we can have a fresh start. Uh, I have a confession to make. I don't want to eat this. Well, Riley, I'm glad that you're being honest and not sugarcoating it. Whew. Okay, well, if we have to eat it, let's just do it, right? You ready, Riley? No, I'm fine. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. No, I got it. I got it. This is awful. Oh, one more bite. I'm going to get through more than one chew. Wait. Remember, don't, don't sugarcoat it. And when you mess up, follow the fresh start plan. Turn around and come home to God's forgiveness. Now, Riley, should we take another bite or sign off? Please, let's sign off. <laughs> Agreed. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. Well, just remember that when we make mistakes, we just have to be real with ourselves and we can't sugarcoat it. We've got to confess it, we've got to turn and go home, and we've got to refresh our mission. I want to pray over all of us today. Heavenly Father, God, may we just remember every single day that when we make mistakes, we have to be real with where we are and what we need to put in place so that we don't continue to make those mistakes. God, I pray for boldness for every single one of us that we remember that and we begin to strive to live a life that is just like you. Now continue now in an attitude of prayer with all heads bowed and no one looking around. I know that there's another group of you in here who you might say, you haven't experienced that grace because you haven't stepped into a relationship with Jesus yet. And you might also say, well, with all the things that I've done in my life and, and the sins and mistakes I've made, how could anybody forgive me? How could anybody love me? What I want you to hear is this, that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die for all of our sins, and that includes yours. And all we have to do in response is to simply say, Jesus, I need you to come into my life. And so today, if you're ready to step into that real relationship with Jesus and to begin to experience His love and His grace for the very first time, I want you to boldly lift your hand right now. Wow, well, as hands are going up around the world, I am so excited for every single one of you making that decision. And I want us to pray together and then celebrate what God did today. So repeat after me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Come into my life, 
Forgive me of my sins and fill me with your spirit. And everybody said, amen and amen. Wow, if that was you and you raised your hand and you said that prayer for the very first time, welcome to the family of God. I wanna encourage you and challenge you to go and share that with a family member, share that with a trusted adult today. Repentance in Christianity means a sincere turning away in both the mind and heart from self to God. It involves a challenge of mind that leads to action, the radical turning away from a sinful course to God. A truly repentant person recognizes God as the most important factor of his or her existence. The invitation to repent is a call to absolute surrender to the will and purposes of God. It means to turn to the Lord and live in constant awareness of Him. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all perish. Jesus called repentance is an essential part of salvation, requir requiring a turning away from the sin-ruled life to a life characterized by obedience to God. The Holy Spirit leads a person to repent, but repentance itself cannot be seen as a good work. That adds to our salvation. The Bible states that people are saved by faith alone. However, there can be no faith in Christ without repentance and no repentance without faith. The two are inseparable. Repentance is recognizing that our sin is offensive to God. Repentance can be superficial, such as the remorse we feel because of fear of punishment, or it can be deep, 
such as realizing how much our sins cost Jesus Christ and how His saving grace washes us clean. My desire is that you pick the last because Jesus indeed paid the highest price for all of our sins. My encouragement for you guys is to search your heart and find out if there's anything that you need to repent and seek, God, and seek God's forgiveness. Don't delay. Do it now. Well, love you all guys. And please don't forget to come back next week as we conclude our summer equip. It's going to be epic. Bye.